Every month, I put together a list of applications for Linux that I call the top five apps of the month. And this month is no different. It's March now, and we're very steadily chugging through the year, which is just absolutely mind-boggling. The fact that it was just Christmas like yesterday, but... It seems like I start out all these videos saying how fast time goes because I just can't believe that it's time for another one of these videos, but that's beside the point. This month I have five really cool apps to share with you, so let's go ahead and jump in. So the first app on the list this month is called EXA. Now this is a very simple application, but basically what it is, is a replacement for the ls command in the terminal. And well, ls is very powerful and it does basically everything you'll need it to do, what EXA does is it adds several options for customization that allow you to get better output for listing files in directories, also adding things like git support and icon support and even more color support than what ls has. And you can also dictate how the files are listed, whether they're horizontal or vertical. There's just a ton of stuff here that you can do with EXA, so much so that I haven't even really scratched the surface of it with what I use it for. I've been using it now for years, but the point of the application is, is simply to make LS even more powerful than it already is, and it's a replacement for it, and it's people are going to say that it's faster because I believe it's actually written in Rust. I'm not actually sure about that, but I don't care about that kind of thing. To me, LS isn't slow, so... The speed of the application isn't really something that I noticed. They're both really fast. So that is EXA. There's not much more I can talk about simply because it just does what it's supposed to do. It lists out applications similar to what LS does, but with a whole bunch more options. If you're going to use this, I highly recommend getting into the man page because there's a ton of flags and stuff. And that's how you customize EXA into something other than just a standard LS. You use those flags in order to make things uh, either look differently or had different output. So that is EXA. Moving on to the next one. The next one is called Coolero. Now what Coolero is in theory is an application that allows you to control your cooling devices inside of your computer. Now the one thing is for sure is that this is not going to work for everybody. For me personally, the only device that this was able to actually detect and allow me to actually configure is the RGB controller on my motherboard. Now, I don't have any RGB devices in my computer at all, so as you can tell, I'm not obviously a gamer, so that's just the thing. But if you have like an AIO or something like that, or, or certain AIOs I should say, uh, of certain fan controllers and stuff like that, C contr uh, Coolero will allow you to set fan curves, set RGB, uh, and stuff like that for those certain devices. Now, like I said, it does not work with everything. So I have an AIO in my computer, but it doesn't actually detect it. I don't know if that's simply because it's not plugged into the, a certain fan header uh, that it can detect or whatever. I don't know what the why it doesn't maybe it's just not compatible but the point is is for me personally uh, the only thing that it detected was the rgb fusion thing on my motherboard other than that it does just a good job of actually showing you what the cpu temperature is so if that's something that you if even if it doesn't detect any of your other hardware being able to just see your cpu temperature is fairly interesting in a, in a graph now like i said with the B-roll you're seeing, you're only seeing what it's able to detect on my system. So what I would do if I were you is download this and give it permission to search through your hardware. And it might be able to detect something that it's more compatible with on your system than it would be on mine. So uh, Coolero is kind of cool because I know a lot of people have hardware in their computers that has software that's available to, to that hardware on Windows. Things that allow you to control RGB and fan curves and all this stuff. That kind of stuff's not usually available on Linux. Coolero will potentially give you an option to tweak some of the settings for that hardware if you can find hardware that is compatible with Coolero or have if you have hardware that is compatible with Coolero. So that is Coolero. Okay, so the next one on the list isn't so much an application as it is a GNOME extension. So if you're using GNOME or you're using Ubuntu or some other uh, desktop environment that uses GNOME, this is a tool that might help you. Now, if you use snaps outside of a GNOME desktop environment, 
sadly, this is not going to be something that you're able to use. But what this app does, it's called Snap Manager. And what Snap Manager does is it allows you to, as it says on the tin, manage your snaps. Now, most of the stuff is just links to commands that are in the terminal. So anything that Snap Manager does, you can obviously do through terminal commands. But if you don't want to do, if you don't want to remember the terminal commands, you can get into the drop down menu, do things like install snaps, remove snaps, update the snap lists, disconnect snaps, and just a ton more stuff that gives you fine tuned control over the snaps that are on your system. Now, I'm not a big snaps guy, as anybody knows, so I don't know a ton about what the technological details are behind so what some of the stuff does. So if you are more into snaps, chances are you'll be more knowledgeable about what some of the stuff towards the bottom of the drop down list actually does. Uh, but for even just the casual snap user, being able to use this drop down menu to install, remove, and see the snaps that are on your list without having to remember the snap commands in the terminal might be possibly useful. Now, ironically, I used a flat pack in order to install this. So, what are you going to do? So that is Snap Manager. Like I said, it's great if you're in Ubuntu or in a GNOME-based distro uh, that is uh, using Snaps. Outside of that, this would not be useful because you can't use it outside of GNOME. So that's, that's a little bit of a downside. I wish that they just made this an application instead of a, uh, of a GNOME extension. Because if this was just an application, like a GTK application, you could use it on any distro, any desktop environment, that uses snaps and it would have been way more useful. So that is Snap Manager. Okay, so the next one is hard to talk about simply because I don't know a ton about it. I've only played around with it for maybe 15 minutes or so and I've done some reading on it. But the app we're talking about this time is called Twine. Now Twine is, as far as I can tell, a visual story creator. So simply something like uh, Choose Your Own Adventure applications that will allow you to create stories that are choose your own adventure style stories inside of an application. Now, it's very very complicated from the like the 15 minutes that I spent around with it and some of the stuff you've seen in the B-roll like you can tell I just have no clue what I'm doing. So, uh, just take that as you will. But the point is is that if you are are interested in writing stories and you want to do something like choose your own adventure, this could possibly be a tool that you can look into to write your story. Now, like I said, it is seemingly very complicated, but I didn't dive into the documentation at all. And, and in fact, I don't know what the documentation even looks like. So I'm just going to hope that there's actually really good documentation to go along with this because it does look fairly complicated. And I would hope that there's documentation to actually, you know, show you how to do stuff. And I, I assume that there is because this has been around for a long time. Now, for me personally, like I said, I haven't spent a lot of time with this, but this is the application this month that I'm looking forward to playing around with the most, simply because I enjoy creating stories and stuff. Like It's something that I really enjoyed doing when I was younger, so being able to look into something like this now might bring back some of those memories. I also like reading Choose Your Own Adventure stories, so if uh, I could create my own, that'd be really cool. Uh, I did see that it has macro support. There's also variable support. So if you wanted to set certain variables throughout your story and then reuse them over and over again, you can do that. Uh, there's also things like being able to link between different passages, which is obviously essential. Uh, I did not notice like a drag and drop linkage uh, uh, capability. So that's what you'll see in the B-roll, possibly. Uh, me trying to link the two pass passages that I created together just by dragging and dropping them. If that functionality is there, it wasn't intuitive, uh, at least in the small amount of time that I played around with it. Uh, but other than that, that's Twine. It's one of those things that's probably not for everybody because not everybody's going to want to create their own, choose your own adventure story. But for those of you who do, this is definitely something to look at. Okay, so the last app on the list this month is called Anki. A-N-K-I. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but basically what Anki or Anki does is it's a flashcard creation tool and that means it's probably not for everyone right but if you're in school or you're studying or you're uh, trying to learn a new language or something like that you could use Anki to create flashcards to help you learn whatever it is you're trying to learn it does a really good job of allowing you to create a whole deck of cards several decks of cards to learn whatever it is you're learning 
I, I did some Spanish stuff. Now, don't laugh at my Spanish that I type in here. I'm not sure if I got any of that stuff right. I'm pretty sure I got hello right beyond that. I'm not sure. My Spanish is very rusty. Like, I, I haven't studied or used Spanish since I got out of university, and that's been 12 years ago now. So, <laughs> it's been a long time. My, my Spanish is rusty. But the point is, is that if you're trying to learn something like this, or if you're still in school, and you want a flashcard program for Linux, Anki is a good choice. Now, it also allows you to keep track of statistics. It allows you to tell it how uh, good you did in terms of remembering what was on the card, if you did well or bad, and then it will reshuffle the cards and allow you to go, you know, obviously start over again, but also will keep track of how well you've done. Now, it uses this due date system. I'm not actually familiar with how or why that exists. It seems seemed a little bit superfluous for me, but that impression was mostly because I didn't look into it too much. Uh, so there is underlying complexity to this app if you want to dive into some of the more advanced features of how to uh, manage your decks and so on and so forth. So that is Anki. Honestly, I kind of wish that I had known about this before or like when I was in university. That would have been really cool because I actually had to create paper flashcards like a caveman. So if uh, you are interested in creating flashcards or maybe perhaps you have children who are, you know, in school, this could be an option for helping them study. So that is Anki. And that is the end of the list for this month. So if you have an application that you'd like to see on this list in the future, you can leave those applications in the comment section below. I know several people have left comments on the last two videos for applications. I promise I haven't forgotten about those yet. So uh, those will appear on featured lists as well. So, so if you're interested in having your application featured on this list, leave those in the comment section below. Uh, just don't leave links because YouTube will delete those things. I won't ever see them. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Robert said Devon, Patrick, Fred Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Nathan Tools, Steve A, Sebrecker Linux, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin e, Andy, Ross, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Benedict, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.